Are you looking for a change management plan template in Excel? Well, in this video, I am going to be showing you step by step exactly how to create this very template in front of you. Now, if you are short of time or do just want to buy this pre-built and pre-formatted, there is a link in the description down below in order for you to go and get it. Now, that being said, I'm now going to show you exactly how you can create the document yourself if you did have a few minutes and wanted to do so. So the first thing I'm going to recommend that you do is just change the name of the sheet at the bottom to change management plan. Make it really, really clear exactly what this is. You can also right click and give this a color as well if you wanted to. So I'm going to do a dark gray here. The next thing I'd also recommend is giving the document a title. So I'm going to click insert and shapes and I'm also going to select the rectangle. Now the reason for this is if you were to share this document with any stakeholder, it just makes it really clear exactly what they're looking at. So I've selected, I've left clicked and dragged all the way through to J3. I'm gonna left click and just drag it right into the corner there. Now I always like to get it matched up with the lines, but it's not too much of an issue because at the end, what we're gonna do is click on view and remove the grid lines. But it does just give you a good overview of, of size. So right click in here, we're gonna click on edit text and I'm gonna call this change management plan. I'm going to select all of this, double left click, bold, and increase the font size to around 28. Now I'm also going to select shape format. I do just want to change the color here because this is more professional than the blue, but you might want to find a color that's suitable for your organization's branding and colors as well. You can also choose from the shape fill here. You can choose any of these and you can also put an outline on it as well. So if I put like a black, that looks really neat and professional. Now let's go ahead and build the, uh, the build the document out. So I'm going to be changing some of the formatting as we go along, such as the column width and the row width. But to begin with, I'm just going to put this a little bit smaller. And we're going to build everything from B5 onwards. So this is our first text field. So yeah, as I say, we'll work on the formatting as we go along. But the first section we need is almost a, a version history. So what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to put something like author, you know, who's responsible, who created this document. I'm going to put this light gray fill and I'm going to select from B5 through to B6 and put all borders and I'm going to drag B out. So this is the content area. This is where you can put the author or your name. I'm going to make C a little bit smaller. Actually, what we're going to do, if I select B, hold shift on my keyboard and go through to J, I'm going to make all of these, let's make all of these 25 for now. I can also right click and click on column width. Let's put these at 25. And then what we'll do is we'll start to change as we go along. So if I, as I do, if I click select column C, hold control on my keyboard, column E, column G and column I, if I right click and if I do column width and let's put these down to 10. Now what this will do is it'll just create nice little differentiation between the columns and the content areas. You'll see this as time goes on. So it basically every other column has a width of 25 and then in between we've got a column width of 10. So we've got author here. The next thing I recommend is just putting a date or date produced. And if I left click here and click on format painter and left click, it brings, oh, press control Z, it brings across that format that they've already done. I actually over selected there. So if I left click and put D5 to D6, you can see we've created this little content area. Again, if I click view and remove the grid lines, you'll see this looks really neat. And it just makes it clear where the information needs to go. So author, date produced, we can put version and we could also put date last updated. We could even put date um, last updated by, but this is just a content area to keep track of basically what we're doing in the document, who created it, when was it last changed, etc. So let's put the formator on all, all along there. So this is our content area. It actually makes sense to drag this across here at this precise moment. So now let's go into building the various different content sections. So what I'm going to suggest that you do is give each section a heading and then we're going to create some tables underneath. So the first we're going to have introduction. I'm going to press bold and I'm going to increase this to, let's put this to 16 and I'm going to indent it by one. 
Now in B10, I'm going to type in objective. I'm gonna left click in author and format painter and click this. I'm then going to, let's go across to date last updated and click merge and center. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select from B11 through to, let's go to H15 and I'm gonna click merge and center. And then if I select left click here and left click down and do all borders around, you'll see we have the ability now to type in the text. And what I'm gonna then do is I'm left click on here. And then if I click on, uh, where are we? If we click on this, this is what we want, the middle of line. So if we, just type, if we were to start typing text in, so for instance, here's what you're gonna to want to put in the objective, ultimately the desired outcome of the change and how it will be beneficial. So here is the change. This is how it's gonna basically appear. So it looks, and then if I remove the grid line just to show you, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Now we could always put this to the left if you wanted to, but I think the middle line works best. But that's essentially what we've, we've done here, we've created a content area. I'm gonna remove that for now, and let's put the grid lines back on. Um, one other thing I'm actually gonna do at this point, uh, view checkbox there, is I'm actually gonna make this 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, and then we'll put this as 10. So we've just got a bit of a hierarchical uh, formatting there. So that's the first we've got objective. I'm gonna select all of this, so B10 all the way through to H15. Control C, in B17, Control V, copy and paste essentially. And then what we're gonna do here is put changing roles and responsive abilities, so somewhere to document those, essentially, how that change is gonna impact existing and new positions. So that's our first content area. We could put a number here if we wanted to, just to indicate this is the first section. Uh, the other thing we can do, which works quite well, is we could uh, put like a nice gray boarding. I'm gonna put a lighter one in like that. So let's do that for now. I'm going to format painter and put that in here. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have overview. And I need to put that gray all along just to keep it uniform. In fact, we need to go all the way to the end here like this. And in the overview section, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna create this little setup. We're gonna put current state, future state, and an impact analysis. I'm gonna bold all of these, and I'm gonna put, merge all of, no, we'll keep it uniform, we'll go here. We're gonna go merge and center, merge and center, merge and center. I'm gonna put a border around all of those. And then let's put a gray here. And then if I select row 26, hold shift on my keyboard through to 28, left click and make the height about there. Just to indicate we've got you know more information you want to capture into, into these sections. So in the current state, yeah, you want to list and detail all processes in, impacted by the project. Um, in the future state, you want to discuss how the above processes will be impacted by the change. And also you want somewhere to document the impact, how the change will impact your processes, your policies, your stakeholder interests, staffing costs, etc. So we've got that now. We want to make sure that this is 11. Yep, that's 11, 16, 16. Oh, this is all new uniform. It looks good. So now we want an area for communication. So let's select all of this, control C, go in here and this changes to communication. At which point I'm going to select all of this, Control C, Control V, and I'm gonna rename this as our com communication strategy. So we want to be able to document that in the content area below. Next, we are gonna create a stakeholder analysis. So I'm going to, um, I've spelled that incorrect, communication. Communication, that's correct. We now wanna create a stakeholder analysis. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all of those, merge and center, stakeholder analysis. I'm gonna bold that. I'm gonna put that gray on. Then I'm going to one, yeah. Then what I'm basically gonna do is merge some of these together. So we'll select those two, merge and center. I'm gonna call this stakeholder. So stakeholder name essentially nature of impact we're going to merge 
these three together and the last two extent of impact and I'm going to merge those two together and then let's select uh, a gray again what it might make sense to do actually is if we put this um, let's put this as a slightly darker and that works then and then what we're going to do is basically select all of this down here um, actually if I click on these need to be merged it's probably not the most efficient way of doing this Basically, those merged. We only we only create three boxes for now, just to show you. But we need these to be uniform, because what we basically need to do, if I put the the grid lines around around it, we need to have. Yeah, you'll see here when I put the grid lines, it doesn't quite look right. There we go. So that's essentially what we need to have. So merge these two together, merge, and merge, and then lastly, let's merge these, merge. I could probably do this quicker but uh, I've come too far now. So we'll merge those two like this, and then we just need to put those as bold. So we've got this area. Basically, we can document what the impact the change will have on the stakeholders and document all the stakeholders um, there. We could even put another column in, like the role of the stakeholder or, or um, interest in the, in the project. Next, we're going to do communication activities. So select all of this, control V. So you'll notice really that what I'm leveraging here is a lot of existing work and formatting. That's where you can save yourself a lot of time. So yeah, basically you'll be documenting anything in any milestones or results that need to be communicated to stakeholders and how you're going to basically do that and how often. So we've got communication activities. Then I'm going to select this. Oh no, let's select all of that. Control C and let's put that in here. Control V. This, we're going to put our implementation plan and objectives and here we basically want a couple of content areas so select all of that control c control v and we'll do one more control v and in these content areas we want somewhere to discuss our methods implementation methods and we also want to discuss our implementation activities so we've got the, both of those. Fantastic. Now we want to just have a, the ability to document our process schedule. So if I select all of these, merge and center, process schedule, let's bold that. Let's put this darker gray on. Let's put that up to we 11. See that, that's 12. We want that to be 12. Uh, yep, that's right. That should be a 12, shouldn't it? And that, that works, that works. So process schedule. So we want to have the activity name. We want to have an activity description. We want to have the party responsible. We want to have the predicted start date and the predicted end date. So what I'm actually now gonna do, cause we've got some spare columns, I'm gonna move this across here, I'm going to move this across here, I'm going to move this across here, and then the activity description will merge together. Oh, that will be merged together like that. So now let's do this down, let's put the things on like this, and let's bold, and then put the lightest grey on, and essentially what we need to do now is just merge those two or these together. Basically, we're giving this a little bit more of a content area because it makes more sense. The description will need more content or more space. And what we can also do is we can wrap the text here. So on the home ribbon, left click, and then that'll make that look like that. Um, perfect. So we've got that, the process schedule. We need a couple more of these, control C, so control V. And in here, we're going to go on. Uh, we need somewhere to discuss the monitoring and evaluation process and also we're going to want to discuss so let's copy that again control v desired outcome fantastic we also want somewhere to document our post implementation plan so let's select all of that content area control v and i'm going to put post implement plan again we just want a couple of different boxes here control c control v in this one it's going to be our monitoring process and also we're going to want to discuss 
our one more of those control C control V our evaluation criteria now we're nearly there we just need to create a couple more boxes essentially so let's do that or content areas control C control V we want to document our organizational change management team and let's leverage one of these so uh, yeah let's create this so control C and let's go here control V and let's literally copy all of this control C and over over paste that and then here this could be the individual's name the title of the individual the department they work in the their role on the project and also some contact information now lastly we need an area for approval so let's do control c control v select all of this approval and then what we're going to want here is let's just select all of this now let's go from here downwards control c control v name title let's do role here this time signature and we're going to want the date as well and that there's one more thing i want to do actually we're going to indent that we're going to indent those by one just to make it more legible do the same here just make sure everything is aligned so that should be like that and then one like that so yeah just make sure everything is the same maybe we need to change the that's 11 and that needs to be that's 11 so there we go then it's just a matter of clicking grid lines off and now we have our template that we can save and leverage for all every time we need a change management plan so i hope this video was useful any questions comments feedback drop them down below with that said over to you best of luck and i hope you have an excellent day